In Rojava, power is decentralized to the point where neighbors make most decisions that affect them in a body called a commune. This is nothing like a commune in the US. It is essentially a neighborhood assembly, made of 100 to 150 families or so, and instead of politicians deciding what norms should govern their community, they all do, through directly democratic structures. Each person living within the commune can represent themselves directly within the commune assembly. The commune is used on a principle that most of us know intrinsically. Nobody knows better what you and your neighbors need than you and your neighbors yourselves. Communes are linked together through elected and removable spokespersons, one woman and one man, to form a neighborhood council. And neighborhoods are linked to form city councils, and so on and so forth. This is a bottom-up or horizontal system of organizing society. The larger the area of administration a council has, the less power it has. For example, in the largest city in Jazeera Canton, Kamislo, there is a neighborhood called Corniche. In Corniche, there are 58 communes. Of these communes, three are Assyrian and Armenian, three Arabic, and 52 Arabic and Kurdish mixed. These 58 communes from the, form the Corniche Neighborhood Assembly, but the heart of power remains in the individual communes themselves. Women and young people also can, and do, organize their own communes separately. The commune is made up of committees which residents can sign up for. To name a few, the Women's Committee, the Youth Committee, Healthcare Committee, Economic Committee, Safety Committee, Neighborhood Defense Groups, and Peace Committee, Transformative Justice says the first line of defense. In order to really understand how communes work, we have to go through the committees one by one. As I said before, the more knowledge is concentrated into the minds of a few people, the more likelihood those people can create an oppressive power dynamic over those who depend on them. For those living in the communes, access to good health care is vital, especially in an area always under threat by hostile states and fundamentalist groups. In such a situation, it benefits no one for health knowledge to remain the domain of professionals. The people of Rojava see the dispersal of this knowledge as the reclamation of traditional knowledge that had once been passed down through women, but had been stolen from them by the state, guarded by powerful men, and sold back to the people for profit. As Haval Azad, a member of the health committee for Jazeera Canton, pointed out, the problem is that before the revolution, there was a deep connection between health and the power of the state. So we are building up a new system with a new basis, trying to remove this connection. Health is one of the key areas which is represented by specific structures and institutions in the new system. So the main aims for health in Rojava are, one, to solve the problem of relations between health and power, or the party. Two, to critique and rebuild the relationship between society and doctors, and three, to return ownership of health to society. Everything is centered around self-organized committees, and if we organize around these committees, the state will disappear. So how is health, knowledge, and care decentralized at the commune level? As I said before, the goal is to decrease reliance on professionals whenever possible. To do this, each commune elects two heads of the health committee, one man, one woman, who are trained by doctors. These co-chairs then train every commune member who wants to learn in basic first aid and often even more advanced aid. This keeps valuable health knowledge from being centralized and allows life-saving action to be dispersed. The communal healthcare model seeks to combine the latest in medical technology and research with traditional natural medicine without discounting the value of either. 
In April of this year, Halanj, village near Kobani, was reported to have achieved medical autonomy through their self-organization and communes. Four of the communes in the village, together part of the House of Communes, established a medical center for themselves and the surrounding area. The villagers chipped in what they could to buy pressure gauges, sugar testers, and other medical tools such as sterilizers and syringes to be stored in the village medical center. The role of natural medicine is encouraged by education so people can learn about their own bodies and some communes are even coordinating excursions for gathering herbs to start to get back the wealth of the local knowledge that 5,000 years of state and patriarchal systems have attempted to destroy. From Kandil, a region in Iraq where Kurds have formed some autonomous villages, also under democratic confederalism, we have the example of the village of Binar, where residents volunteer to plant and harvest the sumac herb together, taking what they need for themselves and distributing the rest to relatives and neighbors. A resident, Amin Mehamed, told a journalist, Sumac contains many healthy features. It is also used as a medicine for many health issues. It is effective against high blood pressure, it strengthens the gums, and is very beneficial for children as well. But it should be enjoyed only in healthy moderation and not in abundance. It is also deemed a medicinal herb. It grows in almost the entire region and it is also effective against diabetes. An important aspect that cannot be overlooked is women's health needs and the way in which women are organizing to meet them. Again, we can turn to Haval Azar. The point is to give people education, at the commune level, so that they can have the knowledge and decide for themselves. In this education, people are made to think about, for example, the consequences of having many children if you do not have any money, and what the future might be like for your children. People are thus given the chance to decide for themselves how many children they want to have. Women can use this knowledge how they would like and have easy access to birth control. The last crucial piece of the health committee is prevention of illness in the first place. Haval Azad noted how states spend tons of money on treating illnesses, but don't put the same resources into prevention. I'll close this section with her words. The state system looks at society as if it, it is sick and needs to be cured, but it is the system itself that is the illness of society. Yeah.